Hi everyone, so we've got a fantastic look for you guys today. I have a wonderful guest artist here in the studio. And I met this artist several years ago. He lives in the US, but I always admire his looks from afar. And I think that he could possibly be described as a true aesthete in that he is, he's not only a makeup artist, but he's also a beauty photographer. And I think he just has that really incredible sensibility for color and for makeup and for all things chic and beautiful. So one of his clients is Kristen Stewart and for years and years and years I've really admired the looks that he has done on her. So I asked him today if he would mind sharing one of those looks and showing us how he achieved the look. So without further ado, here is Bo Nelson. Thank you, Lisa, for having me at the House of Eldridge today. I'm so excited to be here. I did a poll on my Instagram and what you guys wanted to see was a beautiful smoky eye look that I did on Kristen Stewart a few weeks ago. So I'm really excited to do that on my model L today. Let's get started. I start every application with skincare. Today I'm using Chanel Hydra and Sublimage skincare. I like to give my clients a massage of the face, quite a vigorous massage actually. Um, I always check the pressure with my clients, but I actually like to use quite a bit of pressure on the jawline because we hold a lot of tension there. Just turn towards me a little bit. I start on the face like this, and then I really apply a little bit of pressure down. How does that feel? Mm, lovely. And this just helps sort of depuff the face, and it's actually really relaxing for the client. I massage the temples as well. Right here, underneath the eyebrows, I actually like to do this. And it just, you know, it's surprising how much tension we hold here. It's probably for me looking at people like, what the hell are you wearing? But, <laughs> and then I finish up by doing a sort of a sculpting of the jawline. Sometimes I'll use tools to do this, but often I'll just use my hands, so. There we go. I often apply these 111 rose gold masks to my client's eyes. Sometimes I use the black celestial ones, but this one is a brightening eye mask. Look up for me, please. And I usually do this while the hair is being done and you know, I can give them a hand massage. I'm actually pretty quick with makeup, so I don't always take the full time that we have available to us. So it's nice to give the client a little bit of a treat. Now I'm going back in with eye cream. This is the Chanel Sublimage eye cream. And again, I just put it all the way underneath the eye in a little bit of a tapping motion. And then I do another little mini massage just to get the blood flowing there. Make sure the eye area is depuffed. We're going to use Lisa Eldridge's foundation today. This is shade number seven. And what I'm going to do is I'm gonna apply it just in the areas where I need coverage. Elle has beautiful skin, so we're not gonna use a lot. And I just dot it on the face like this. She's got a little bit of redness around her nose, so we'll concentrate there. And a little bit on the forehead. Now, I've developed a new makeup tool. It is called Leia. This is Leia, and it looks a little crazy. <laughs> uh, Leia is meant to mimic skin on skin texture, and I wanted to create something that didn't waste makeup but that applied it beautifully. So I'm using the textured side of Leia to gently tap the makeup in. And what you'll notice about this is that you get the complete coverage of whatever it is that you're using and you don't waste any makeup at all. So I just tap, tap, tap. How does that feel? Mm, really nice. It's interesting, isn't it? Yeah. It's much nicer than a brush, actually. You can just see it applies it really seamlessly and beautifully. You can even rub it like this if you need to, just to shear out the coverage. Now I'm using Tarte Shape Tape Concealer in a couple of different shades, and I'm just mixing them to create a custom shade for her skin. And I'm going to use a brush just to go around her nose. And I'm just kind of applying this, you know, without really blending it too much. I'm going to go back in with Leia and just press it into the skin. That way I get the full, full coverage. But this is a great way of using concealer because you can just fluff it on and you get to cover where you need to cover and not cover anything else. I really like skin that looks like skin. So I spend a lot Shame. of time buffing in. Uh -huh. 
use the smooth side of Leia just to tap that in. Use a little bit lighter shade underneath the eyes. The same brush. This is a brush from Real Techniques. I swear I have probably 50 of them. Um, I use them all the time. I use it for eyeshadow. I use it for contour. I use it for um, powder. I use it for just about anything I can, honestly. It's my favorite, favorite brush. And again, just taking my time to buff this in and cover any redness. I want the skin to be as glowing as possible with this look. Kristen doesn't like to wear a lot of face makeup. She really loves a bold eye, but she's not into a lot of skin makeup. So we really try to take care and make her skin look as realistic as possible. And that's my preference for everything that I do as well. I can use a little bit of it as a base on the eyelid as well just to even out that eyelid. So I'm using a little bit of Soleil Tan from Chanel, which is one of my favorite products. It's a cream bronzer, and I'm using it on a fluffy brush. And I'm just gonna start at the forehead and lightly contour the face with it. Now, we're getting a little bit more on than we would want, but that's perfect because we're gonna blend it out in just a second. So on the cheekbones, a little bit along the jawline. I'm gonna take a clean brush and just buff it into the skin. And that's gonna give us the most realistic finish. I love working with cream products because I feel like they mimic the skin a lot. So you'll notice actually almost everything I'm using today is cream. Um, some of them are self-setting. So for the eyeshadows, it's gonna be a self-setting eyeshadow and some of them just stay dewy and fresh. And I always take a little bit of the excess and put it on the nose, just make it a little bit more realistic. Next, I'm going to use a little bit of Stila Convertible Color. These are one of my favorite products. Just dipping it in with the textured side of Leia, stamping it on my hand just a little bit to remove a little bit of the excess, and going right onto the cheekbone and popping it on. I love these cream blushes because they have a, quite a bit of glow to them, and I love skin that looks luminous like this. I really wanted to use Lisa's cream blush, but it's out of stock until spring, so this will have to do. Blend those edges a little bit with a brush that has a little bit of foundation on it still. Always taking time to blend in between each step. Now I'm going to go in with the Shuamura Eyelash Curler down for me and just curl the lashes. I like to walk it out and actually squeeze a few times just so I get a gradual curl. Makes a huge difference. So look up for me, please. And I'm going to put this black eyeliner right in the inner rim of her eye. I often will actually even ask my clients to do this themselves because it is a little bit uncomfortable, but I try to be gentle, so hopefully you're all right. All good so far. And I really like to get it in the inside corner here. Really, that's the most important part, I think. And I'll, I'll go back and layer this a few times during this. Squeeze your eyes really tight for me. Really, really tight. And open. And a couple more times. What this does is it just squeezes it out into the lash line. Yeah. Now I'm going back in with uh, Makeup Forever Aqua XL Liner in shade M80. And, closer, and I'm just going to messily put this on the top lid. I'm going to do one eye at a time because this is a self-setting eyeliner and I want to make sure I have time to blend. Now, one thing about this is if you are using a self-setting eyeliner and a cream shadow together, it actually makes the eyeliner a lot more blendable. I'm using a shade called Chocolate Bronze from Charlotte Tilbury. That's in a palette. Put a little on the back of my hand and I'm going to blend this together. And what that does is it just gives the eyeliner a little bit more malleability and I can really just shape it. So I'm really smushing it into the lashes with this brush. And then I'm going to go back in with another brush. I'm just going to kind of get the shape. With Kristen, we always do sort of a winged up shape. It's kind of become a signature for us. We like to do sort of a feline kind of eye. It's sort of a soft way. So I'll often draw the shape sort of like that. 
And then I'll take a softer brush and go in again with the cream shadow and make it more intense. So just layering this is a really good way to go. You can create whatever intensity you want. So if you don't want it to be as intense as what we're doing today, you can do a sheer version of it. Or you could go even more. Just take your time to blend and layer and blend and layer. And a clean brush can sometimes be your very best friend. Just blending those edges as you go along and pulling it out. This is how I really do. I sort of make a sharp shape and then I kind of pull it out and fade it into nothing. And that way you really get that graduation. So using the same eyeliner, look up for me, please. I'm gonna go underneath her lash line. And again, you don't have to be too precious with this. So we are going to be smudging it. But I go just right to the point where the um, eyelashes stop. So sort of at that point where the tear duct starts. And I love, I love this brush from, I think this brush is from Sigma. It's a great little pencil brush and it's stiff enough, but soft enough to do this job. So it just blends it beautifully. I'm gonna blend almost into sort of a, like almost a banana shape underneath the eye. So that's sort of the base of our smoky eye. Now you can take this anywhere you wanna go. You can put eyeshadow on top of it. You can put more cream shadows on top of it. You can make it darker. You can pop sparkle on top, but this is what we've done so far. And now we're gonna take it a little bit deeper. So I've got a black shade from my cream eyeshadow palette. Put a little bit on the back of my hand and close my feet. I'm going to go back in to the outside corner, again, pulling that shape out and push smudging it along the lash line. And adding a little bit more of the chocolate bronze shade and just tapping it on so I get more coverage. I'm blending that out. I'm going to go a little bit darker, continue blending. And again, it's just adding these sheer layers of color. What I love working with creams is because they're really forgiving. You can move them around, you can take them off almost without disturbing too much. And um, I find them just a lot easier, honestly, to use than powder eyeshadows a lot of the time. So I know they might be intimidating for those of you at home, but I really suggest you try playing with them because I've used them before. they're just so easy. You know, really, you can put them on with your fingers if you want to and then having a little brush just to brush the edges. And it's about the pressure. You see how, how lightly I'm touching? Mm -hmm. It's important. Because you can really get that gradation. It looks like more than you know two shades if you use different pressures to put them on. I'm gonna go back in with a little bit of a mix of the purple from Makeup Forever. I'm just mixing on my hand. And a little bit of the black Chanel eyeliner, just like that. I often use the back of my hand as a palette me too. I think it's just the best way. I mean, I have all these palettes and then I forget that I have them. But smudging that into the lash line, look up for me, please. And then smudging it on the bottom as well. And really smoking out this bottom area and connecting it to the top. That's the most important thing. So now I'm going to go in with some eyeshadows to make it a little bit more intense. And today I'm using Hourglass. These new shadows are really beautiful. And this uh, sort of purpley bronze one is perfect for this. I'm just layering this on top of the cream shadow. It's now acting as a base. So this actually really creates a really long wearing makeup. Again, just taking my time to blend and pull out slightly. Open. There, and now you really get that rich density of color. I'm gonna use a soft brush underneath the eye as well. Same shade. I love these sort of pencil-like brushes because you can really control the amount that it goes down underneath the eyelid by the amount that you put on the brush. So if you just dip the tip in, 
then you're only going to get a little bit. And if you drag it a little bit longer, then you're going to get a little bit more. So I want this to be quite dramatic. I'm going to go back in with the black. And again, just with the tip of the brush. Look up for me, please. And then smudge a little bit of black closer to the lash line. And close to me. And again, here. And on the outside corner. I'm just going to go back in and blend with a clean brush. Pull and lift. This is really the key to this look, is like pulling it out and lifting. And open. Now, if you want to soften the edges a little bit more, you can go back to your brush that has a little bit of concealer on it and use that to clean up the edges and soften the edges. Look up for me, please. This way, it sort of blurs the edges into the skin, and that's the way I really like to see things. So they look sort of seamless. And I go both on the top and underneath. Look up for me, please. Thank you. And just keep blending. And if you need to add a little bit more concealer, you can always pop that on as well. Close to me. I'm gonna just erase these edges just a little bit more, especially on the outside corner, just so it starts to melt into the skin. Just like that. And lifting up again, always, and open. There we go. Now we have that nice graduated line. I'm seeing I'm gonna just blend a little bit more. Close to me, please. Here, and just bring it up slightly. Make it a little bit smokier. And also just a little bit into the inside corner here, which really gives an elongation to the eye. Again, close to me. Especially in the inside corner, you don't want it to be too harsh there. You just want it to blend seamlessly. Great. Good, now we're ready to move on to lashes for this eye. All right, so we're gonna use a little bit of something new on you today. My personal favorite false eyelashes. Uh, it's called Lashify. And you start by doing this. Look down, and we're gonna put a little bit of the bond on your lashes. And you have really long lashes, so you don't need to use it all the way along the, the lash. You can use it just sort of at the base. Put a layer on, just like that. And then you let it sit for a second. And then you're gonna put a little bit more on. This is a, they call this a triple bonding technique. So this is something that you can wear for a couple of days if you want to, as long as you don't use an oil-based makeup remover, otherwise the lashes will come off. Going to the back of the base. And what you wanna do is that this bond gets a little bit tacky. And that's when you know it's time to start applying the lashes. Going back in with the clear bond, and I'm just gonna put a little bit on the roots of the lashes just a tiny bit. And again, you want to wait a little bit before this, before you start. So for this look, I'm going to start with an A10 in the inside corner. And I'm doing that because I'm going to use some really voluminous lashes, but I like them to start as really natural as possible. And Elle's got really long eyelashes, so we're using a 10 instead of an 8. So I'm going to look down for me. I'm going to go under the lash, leaving a couple of her natural lashes out. I'm going to pop that on. Now I'm going to use an F10 which is a lot more fluffy, a lot more voluminous, and put it right next to it. These look so good when you're finished. And it's nice because you can control the length. It almost makes it look like it's um, tight lined, which is like when you put the eyeliner in between your eyelashes, really, really gives you a nice black base to your lash line. Use the fusion wand and fuse down on the lash. And this fuses the lash right to your own. So she's wearing A8, F10, F10, F12, F12, F12. And it gives a really fluffy, dark, beautiful lash. And look up for me, please. And now we're going to go back in with the black eyeliner, gently rimming the eye. This is a really important step. We really love a black eyeliner when we're working with Kristen. We almost always use it. Sometimes we use a red. Uh, she actually really loves a red in the inner rim as well. Good. And then I'm going to use a little bit of my favorite mascara. I don't really use mascara that much anymore, 
But when I do, I use it on the bottom lid and it's always the same one. Look up for me, please. It's L'Oreal Carbon Black Voluminous. It is cheap and the best. Just trying to touch those lashes without getting them too clumpy. I definitely want some definition. Wait, and that's the finished eye. Just gonna blend this a little bit more. Really take your time and step back in the mirror and really look at sort of the evenness of the eye. So make sure it's perfect. And I kind of do that all over the last finishing steps. So now I'm gonna go back to concealer and just brighten under the eye a little bit. Using my favorite brush, look up. Popping that open there and blending that up again and just erasing that edge even more. And blending underneath the eye and up. I'm just going to add a tiny bit more coverage to the chin and around the nose. And this is really kind of where you polish up the, the look and make sure that it's perfect. You know, and adding this coverage in strategic areas is what makes skin look real. So you just want to pull this out and blend. Okay, so now I can see she's going to need a little bit more blush. So we'll go back in with the same shade that we used before. Sometimes I use a little bit of leftover just on the on the jawline and then the hairline, and that kind of brings the face together. It's just very, very little, but it does make a subtle difference. When you're using the Leia, I mean, it's definitely a different technique than it is a sponge because it doesn't hold product like a sponge does. It doesn't suck it up either. So you need a lot less. Now I'm gonna go in with this shade from Charlotte Tilbury's Nude Chasm Palette. It's a really beautiful light taupe shade, and this NARS brush is perfect for contouring. And I'm going to just carve her cheekbones out a little bit. I'm going to start at the hairline and just flick forward and under the jawline, just from the back of the ear, from the bottom of the ear, excuse me, forward, down. And sometimes I like to do a little bit on the temple as well. Okay, and turn this way for me. Now you'll notice I'm doing this before powdering. Sometimes people would do this before they powder, but I like to keep everything sort of creamy so I can move it around until the last minute. What I like to do then is again, the same way that I was erasing the shadow and sharpening it, is to do that with the contour. I just bring it up slightly higher and blend the front edges of it. All right, using my favorite pressed powder, which is again, Charlotte Tilbury, um, this is fair. And I'm just gonna put it on the high points of the face, the forehead. I love this powder because it has a little bit of wax in it. So it actually doesn't really look like powder. It kind of just looks, settles into the skin, mattifies it and sets your makeup without being too um, matte and losing all the luminosity in the skin. So I love doing it just really around the nose, paying close attention to there, a little bit on the chin. I like to leave the rest of the face with a little bit of shine, but I do like to set under the eyes just to make sure that the eyeshadow doesn't move or crease. And again, it also helps blend the edges of it just a little bit more. And sometimes I don't love a highlight on the brow, but I do like a soft bit of pressed powder. And I just run that over the edges of the eyeshadow and that seems to just blend it as well. For brows, I'm just gonna brush up her brows and just see what the natural shape is. She's got amazing eyebrows, so we're not gonna do a lot. And I'm just using a clean spoolie to do that. And sometimes less really is more. So with her, I'm gonna add just a tiny touch of brow powder just exactly where I need it. I'm going to use the Anastasia Brow Powder in Ash Brown. It's a duo. And I'm just going to lightly Start at the front part of the brow, 
and really at gentle pressure here because I really don't want to deposit a lot of color. I just want to give it some definition. Sometimes I'll use a really soft eyeshadow brush right in the beginning of the eyebrow because if I want it to be super soft, then I use a soft brush. Pretty genius idea, huh? <laughs> and then I'm going to make them just a little bit thicker just at the top. And this is something that I do actually with Kristen. Sometimes we will make her brows look a little bit thicker. So I go up on the top and then I brush them up to sort of disguise where we put the powder. And that really can be a great trick for, for you girls who have over tweezed your eyebrows at home and you want them to look a little thicker, just grow them a little bit longer and then brush them up over top of your powder or your pencil, whatever you decide to use. I'm gonna lengthen them slightly, just a hair. Right. And once I've done that, I'm going to go back in with my spoolie. And you'll see I haven't really put anything at the very beginning of the brow. I want it to look quite natural and then get a little bit darker as we go out. So it's sort of like an ombre, but not in the way that you may have seen it on Instagram. So now she's got a full thick brow. I think we're going to thin it out even more. So you can just brush a little bit of the product out of it and just soften. So you can sort of control the amount here. I'm going to go with it, go in with one of my favorite products, this um, brow soap by WB Co. And it is kind of amazing, actually. It really keeps the brow hairs in place. So for anyone who has longer or unruly brows, this is a great product to use. So you just put a little bit of water in with it and then you can brush it up into the brow and it really holds the shape. You can really get a nice lift and fluffiness to the brow this way. Great. Just a touch more contour. It's got great cheekbones, but we want to bring them out even more. Now we're going to go back in with a little bit of highlighter. I'm going to use Lisa's Elevated Glow Highlighter in Cosmic Rose. This is great. It's got a big doe foot on it, but actually it has a reservoir tip. So you really just need one or two little dots. I'm doing three tiny little dots just on the cheekbones. And also I'm going to do one just on the edge of the top lip. This is a really nice little trick. If you want to make your lips stand out just to pop the Cupid's bow a little bit. Back in with the textured side of Leia and just gently pat the highlighter in. I like to take it up onto the temple a little bit. You don't want to take it too far into the center of the face. I almost use sometimes use my finger just to blend edge. Onto the temple. And, and then sometimes a little touch of powder again just to blend those textures together. There we go. Now we're ready for lips. So we're using Kitten Mischief from Lisa's line today. This is a, um, a sheer lipstick, but with a lot of pigment, but still a little bit shiny. I love this color. And it's sort of natural with a little bit of punch. So just applying that on the lip. Have you give me a little mush? Thank you. She really doesn't need any lip liner or anything for this look. Um, we almost never put any on Kristen. We just usually, she actually really loves to just wear lip balm a lot of the time. So this is actually a great lipstick um, because it's sort of like a lip balm but with a little tint. Mm, it's my favorite. Mm -hmm. It's perfect for you. And then I'm going to put a tiny touch of gloss, and this gloss is called Songbird. And I'm just going to apply that directly from the container here. It's a perfect, it's almost a perfect match to the lipstick, so. And now we'll get Willis to do the hair and we'll be right back. Okay, so Willis has just done the hair and it looks great. I'm going to add a tiny touch of blush and then we're going to be done. You're going to have the full Kristen Stewart look. What do you think? I absolutely love it. I want to go out now. Right, perfect. It's the perfect look for going out. Thanks so much for having me, Lisa. I was so excited to be here and um, can't wait to come back and do something again soon.